Hey guys, awesome to have you here today. I'm gonna to give you some great tips to help you start hitting your drive more accurate, more solid, and a little bit farther. And I'm gonna walk it through in the basics, let you know some things that took me a lot of time to figure out and are really gonna help your game. So first, let's go over alignment with the driver. Now, first off, we can kind of imagine our target line. What I like to do when you're practicing your driver on the driving range is just put some kind of stick or you could put down another club point it toward the target in the distance where you want to hit. Now, most players, as they begin to play golf, tend to struggle a little bit with a slice. So that means that their right shoulder, their right arm, and their body are kind of coming over the top. I'm exaggerating here so you can see this. It's not this extreme usually, but it's coming over the top, outside, and then that club is kind of wiping across the ball this way with the face open. And that causes the ball to start either straight or maybe even a little bit to the right, and then it really slices off well to the right. Now the tendency there, because the ball keeps on slicing to the right, is to line up farther and farther left. Well, that just exaggerates the problem where now we're going to start coming more over the top to try to get the ball more to the left. It's going to slice even more. So the farther left you line up, the more it's going to slice. What you'll notice with pros is that typically they're going to be somewhere close to parallel with their target line. What I recommend is to close your stance just a little bit. Have this front foot a little bit more to the right. It serves two purposes. Number one, it's gonna help you come more from the inside and get more of that draw. Now you'll learn to release the face. And number two, as you swing, you kind of imagine this driver's on a hula hoop or swinging on a hula hoop here. As that, drive, as that club starts to move back up, it actually moves a little bit more to the left because you're hitting driver on the upward swing. So by lining up a little bit farther to the right, now as you start to swing back up, your club's actually moving pretty square to the ball. So set down this alignment stick. And one of the keys with top speed golf is you have to train things a little bit different. I like to go in the extremes. We'll practice this variability training. I want you to line up one where your feet are way to the left, make a swing, and this is on the driving range, see where the ball goes. Then line up to the right, way to the right, swing one there, still try to hit it towards your target again, and then notice what that does to the flight of the ball and the curvature of the ball. Let me go ahead and, and give you an example of those. This first one I'm gonna line up to the left. Naturally, you're gonna see this ball wants to start slicing a little bit more. So you see that ball started to slice way out to the right. Terrible shot really started to go over there and that's gonna be just in the right rough. Now I'm gonna do the opposite here. I want you to go back and forth doing this for 10 drives. Don't worry about hitting good shots, just notice what happens as we do this. Now I'm gonna line up to the right. Because my target's to the left, naturally I start to roll my hands more and get a bit more of a draw. So now that ball curved to the left. And again, I'm exaggerating here. That's in the left edge of the fairway. But by changing my alignment, instinctively it's much easier to get a draw because you know subconsciously you just know oh i got to release that club face so practice that out on the driving range alternate 10 shots one way to the left one way to the right one way to the left one way to the right then from there you can kind of fine tune find that perfect alignment for your individual swing that helps you to get the ball to go straight all right so now let's move to ball position this is really critical if i want to drive far if i want to hit the ball really far I need to be catching that ball on the upswing. Not a lot of loft on a driver, and essentially what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get this club moving on the upward swing and de-lofting so it's almost like a knuckleball. The ball starts to spin this way and knuckle through the wind. That's the visualization that you have. In reality, it's always gonna have some backspin, but that's what we wanna be picturing in our mind. So to do that, to get the most distance here, I wanna tee the ball up fairly high. The higher you tee it up, the more potential you have to hit it on the upswing, the more potential you have for distance. That's why you'll notice long drive guys tee the ball way up in the air, really, really high, so they can really hit up on it. I want you to tee the ball up at least a half a ball over top of the driver head. I'm going a little bit more exaggerated here just to, to kind of show you what I mean. Play that ball at least, where if you're looking at it from face on, it's gonna be somewhere around the left heel all the way up here to the middle of the left foot. I don't wanna get this ball way back in my stance or I'm gonna to tend to hit down on it more. I may hit some good shots. This is more of a conservative approach. If you just wanna get one in the fairway, this might be good. But if I really wanna get some good distance, I'm gonna play that ball up in my stance. As that club swings, you can imagine the bottom of the arc is here, and it's actually working back up as I'm actually hitting into the golf ball. 
So let's try that out. Put it up in your stance. Remember, line up a little bit to the right here, and then I'm gonna work on hitting kind of a high top spin knuckleball is what I'm gonna visualize so that ball really penetrates through the wind and gets my maximum distance. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go, crush that one right down the middle. Let's take a look, that's about as good as I can hit one there. Let's take a look at the flight scope numbers now and see what my angle of attack was. So in flight scope, it's telling me that that shot was positive 2.8 on the upswing, meaning my club is moving up 2.8, 115 miles of club head speed, 301 yards, 300.9 yards of carry, 333, 334.3, on the drive. I can't do much better than that. All right, so now we gotta get some distance. It doesn't matter how straight, how good our alignment is, if we're hitting an upswing. If we can't swing that club pretty fast, we're not gonna hit it very far. PJ Tour average is about 113 miles an hour. LPJ Tour average is about 96 miles an hour. And I think the Senior Tour, Champions Tour, those are the 50 and over offers, are swinging about 106 or 104 on average. I can't remember the exact number there. So that gives you a good idea of kind of where you should be if you're an elite player. Um, but the big key here is, no matter where you're at, we can make some technique changes that are gonna help you to speed that up. The first one is gonna be how much I turn my body. So if you watch really good, longer players that hit it pretty far, they're gonna let their hips, their shoulders, and their arms go really far back. So if I stop my swing here, and this is as far as I go back, my shoulders haven't turned very much, my hands haven't gone very far back, and I only have from here to where my hands come at contact. So I only have from here to there to accelerate this club. This very short amount of time I can move my hands. If I can let my hips, my shoulders, and my arms go farther back, now I'm creating more room to accelerate the club. The more room you have, the faster you're gonna swing if you put out the same amount of effort. So unless you're really big, really strong, you're the kind of person that can throw a 90 mile an hour fastball, slam dunk, you know, on a basketball court, I would recommend going a lot longer back. Even if you can do all those things, if you go longer back, you're just gonna get even more distance with that. So let's do a drill here. Now we're gonna go ahead, take your stance, put your arms out to the side, and I want you to practice rotating your body until your arms are kind of pointing what would be behind the golf ball. So I'm setting up here, my arms are turning behind the golf ball. As I come on through, now I'm letting this right foot come up, I'm letting my hips pivot through, my arms will be turning past the golf ball here, and then I'm coming to my good full finish. So it's gonna look like this as we do this drill. And that just gets your body loosened up, gets you making that good full turn and really hitting it hard. So as you do that, 20 or 30 reps, you're gonna feel that same feeling, or that, that free flowing feeling, then incorporate that with your actual driver. Now make some practice swings, another 20 or so practice swings, getting that good full turn both back and through, then you're ready to hit some shots. On this one, I'm really gonna focus on that big turn and let's see what kind of swing speed we can get. There we go, not quite as solid as the one before, but I'll still take that. Felt like I swung pretty hard on it. Let's see what kind of miles per hour we had. All right, my club head speed is 118.5. Very happy with that. 284 carry, it went a little bit lower, really ran over the hill and got 321 total distance. All right, so the final piece here, we gotta release this golf club. The natural tendency, what I always did when I first started to play, what I see basically every golfer, I've seen thousands of golfers in lessons, and every single one of them has the natural tendency when they first start to play, which is as you get from the top, you wanna to hit this ball really hard with a lot of speed. So we start to push the club, to cast the club early. And what ends up happening is we lose this angle called lag in our wrist. We burn all that speed up back here. And then when we get to the ball, the club's actually slowing down. What we wanna have happen is we wanna actually increase this lag as we start down, get a good sharp angle here between our club and, the, and our arms. And then from there, we have to release this club out in front. So I want you to do a really easy drill here to get familiar with that release and start to, to get that speed where you need it, which is right at the golf ball. So I want you to just go ahead and take a half back swing. Imagine this is our downswing here. And I want you to get this sharp angle between your hands and arms. Now one key is I don't want it this club pointing straight up and down. I want it to be a little bit flatter from here. Some people call this getting into the slot. Really key to being able to hit solid shots over and over. So I get in the slot here, I have this nice angle of lag, and then from there, I want you to open your hips, go ahead and let your feet rotate, your knees rotate. I'm gonna open my hips, and I'm gonna release that club to where now I've gotten rid of all these angles. That's what we call the straight line release in our top speed golf system, and I've let that club whip on through. So a couple practice swings, halfway back, and then go to the release. Hips, shoulders, arms, everything's released in front. 
Do that about 10 or 15 times just to get the overall feel of that motion. You don't have to try to do it fast. You don't have to do anything fancy there. Just get that feel. Then we're gonna incorporate that same feel as we're making a full practice swing. So your full back swing, I'm gonna feel that lag. I'm gonna feel the club release in front. If I do that, now I'm gonna get that whip action happening right at the golf ball. So here, a great way to feel this and a great way to train differently so that actually you get the feeling faster is exaggerate both extremes. As you start down, cast the club and then try to swing through. So it'd be something like this and you'll see how I don't have very much speed. And then the next one, get a big angle of lag, release the club in front. And now you can start to hear that whipping on through contact. So 15 to 20 practice swings alternating. One cast, one good lag one, and then release in front. If you always visualize releasing in front of the golf ball, that makes things so much easier as you go out to play. So that once you get comfortable with that, let's go ahead and hit a couple more, or we'll hit, go ahead and hit on some on the range. I'm gonna go ahead and try to really rip one. I may not be the straightest on this one, but I'm gonna try to see if I can get it farthest, the farthest of any of them that I've had so far. Let's give it a whirl. Oh, a little to the right, still a good drive. I don't think I'm gonna beat my last one. I, I killed the one before that, or two swings ago. So let's see what the flight scope says. Club head speed was 117.4, 290 carry, 320 total distance. Hey, hitting it well, follow those keys. Get the right ball position, get your alignment so you can work on those fades and draws and then straighten it out. And then get that lag and release in front. It's gonna make driving so much more easy. All right guys, hope y'all really enjoyed this video. At the end of this, I really talked about how you wanna get some great lag, get that club to whip through contact and release in front. Well, that's what we call top speed lag and the straight line release. I'm gonna play a bonus video talking about one of the top lag mistakes that I see players make. It kills their lag. And once you switch this idea, you're gonna to start to add some speed to your swing. So that bonus video is gonna play here in just one second. All you need to do is click the I card up on the screen or the link down below in the description and you'll get instant access to that full video plus five bonus videos from our Top Speed Golf System. I can't wait to start helping you guys with your game. Let's go ahead and get started. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. 